Hello and welcome back. Thanks for joining me today. Um, if it's your first time, you picked a good day because I'm starting a brand new series that I'm really excited about. So if you've been following me on Facebook for a while or even this brand new channel for me, um, you might know that I make jewelry. I've been making jewelry for about 12 years now. And only in the last year did I start doing um, altered books and mixed media art and junk journaling and all that kind of thing. And I decided I kind of um, needed a little restart, fresh start, I guess you could say. And my husband and I took a little road trip last week and I took a book with me because I couldn't take any crafting stuff. And I, I found a book in my stash that I hadn't read yet. I bought it. We go to the bookstore a lot and I head straight to the craft section and jewelry section and find things. And I had bought a book, um, which was perfect because it kind of made me revisit where I started with the jewelry. And it gave me the idea that I wanted to try to do a series where I mix the two together. So I want to take my new love of mixed media and paper craft and that kind of thing and see how many projects I could come up with using jewelry techniques or vice versa, using paper and jewelry or making embellishments for books, that kind of thing. So next video, not this one, I'm going to show you how I did this bookmark. Um, and you can also do like little, you know, little dangle jewel things for, for books just to decorate them you know, that kind of thing. So that'll be the next video. But I wanted to start with this one on kind of the basics of making resin paper um, so that we can get started on that and it can get your, you know, creative juices flowing and you might come up with some great ideas too on your own that you can share with me. So about 12 years ago, like I said, I started making jewelry and right away I got hooked on resin. And I started immediately making these um, bezels myself. They're open back, um, just as something I wanted to do that I hadn't seen, that I wanted to kind of create my own style, I guess you could say. So this is kind of what I have been doing. And when I first started doing these, I did a lot of mixed media, even within those. Um, they've kind of gotten simpler over the last couple of years mostly because those have become very popular. Um, but I kind of want to get back into the artistic part of it for me. So this was a great um, chance for me to kind of explore that again. So to get started, I'm going to, like I normally do, share all of the, um, any kind of tools, books, references, and that kind of thing. I'll put those in the description. Um, and, and that way you can find them and, and, you know, go purchase them if you want. I'm not advertising for anybody. It's going to feel like it in this episode just because I'm using um, a lot of products from the same person. So when I, I first started out, I bought this book and I just was hooked. And I didn't realize it at the time, but Susan Leonard Kasmer is the woman that invented ice resin. And like I said, right away, I was just hooked on this and... I kind of immediately started doing my own thing. So there's a lot of ideas even in here. Um, she has a totally different style than I do, I think. But just learning the the techniques and the products, you know, you get your own creative juices going and then you kind of do your own thing. So that's kind of what happened to me. And I kind of went off on my own own thing. And then I had bought this book recently, but hadn't read it yet. So when we were on a road trip last week, I took this with me and it was great because it kind of just rejuvenated the whole thing. And it gave me an, the idea because she does a lot of uh, mixed media style. It, it gave me the idea that I needed to do a series where I could mix my love of making jewelry with my newfound love of mixed media and junk journaling and altered books and all that kind of thing. So who knows where this is going to go, but um I'm happy that you're joining me on this journey. So the first thing I want to do, um, this episode is mostly going to be just like making resin paper. And the first thing I want to do is to go ahead and get my resin mixed up because it needs to sit for a minute or two. So um, if you don't know what ice resin is, it is a two-part epoxy. Um, it's invented by Susan Leonard Casmer, like I said, and it's car Ranger carries all her products. So even since she invented this, there are other products that are associated with this whole uh, genre of crafting. So um, I'll I'll try to 
like I said, put those in the description. So it has two parts. Part A is the resin and part B is the hardener. And it's recommended that you use your bottle within six months. I have had these a little longer than that. When you purchase it, it should be a clearer color than this. You can see mine's kind of yellowing a little bit. It will turn a dark amber color over time. Now, I store mine in a closet and a pretty consistent temperature in the dark. So, you know, it's lasted pretty quite a while. So, but I do need to get new bottles. So these are very large bottles. You don't want to buy something this size when you're just starting out. It also comes in like a dual plunger thing, like a one time, one use. That might be the best place to start to see if you even like working with it. Um, and there's different sizes. There's smaller size bottles than this too. And she also does a kit with two smaller size bottles and then a stir stick and some of the little measuring cups. Because I do this all the time, I go for the large quantities of everything. So I just get these online. Uh, medical supply places have them uh, for the pharmacy. It's just the little medicine measuring cups, you know, that come on your, you know, you may even have one in your, in your, uh, in your cabinet now just from something. So the first thing you want to do is it's equal parts that you mix. So I take a Sharpie and I'll, I'll pick, I did it on the quarter it quarter ounce here, uh, just a black mark, and then at the half. Because it's a clear cup and these marks are all just kind of embedded in the plastic, when you put liquid in there, it kind of hides the line. So making that black line will just make you uh, make it easier to measure. So I'm just gonna start with the part A and my bottle's getting in. This one, the part A is thicker than the part B. So I'm just gonna squeeze out and go to that first line and I've got to get my eye level here so I can see where it is. And you kind of want to stop squeezing before you get to the line because as it settles, it'll move up. So I need a little bit more there. Okay, that looks good. And then, like I said, my part B is kind of yellowing a little bit. You can actually color your resin with uh, paints or inks and different things. So I wouldn't throw this out. You know, I'll probably order a new bottle, but keep this because it when it's when it's dried and set in, it's really, this one's still okay, I think. Um, but I can use it for colored ones and then you won't even know, or even just on paper. So you don't want to waste it. It's not cheap. Okay, so I have my two. I don't know if you can see that in this. If I tip it, it's going to spill, but they're kind of two different colors. So I'm going to just start mixing those together with a popsicle stick. And you want to fold it in. You'll kind of see, you can kind of see the two colors are separated still. But once I stir that, it's going to mix in really good. You want to make sure you scrape the bottom and the sides. And it says to mix this a full two minutes. So, um... We'll kind of guess, since I'm filming with my phone, I can't set my timer. Um, but I don't know if any of you have worked with resin before. Um, there's some some resins, like the big tabletops and things like that you see. You'll see that they have to use a torch um, to maybe get the bubbles out and that kind of thing. This one, you don't have to do that. They'll kind of settle out. It's, you know, there's going to be a chemical reaction here, and they're going to, it is going to get bubbles when you stir it, but... Um, that's why I'm going to sit, set it and let it rest for about five minutes before I start using it. Uh, that way the bubbles will all kind of come to the top and I can pop them and um, kind of deal with them as you go. You have about a half an hour working time with this um, before it sets up. Uh, so, you know, you, you want to plan ahead with what you're going to be working on so that you have it all ready and you can just do your pours. Now, this will set up um, in a six to eight out, six to six, six to 10 or eight to 10 hours. So what I usually do is I plan a pour and you set it aside. You don't want to touch it after that. You kind of keep an eye on it for half an hour or so as it sets up, because if, if there are bubbles that you didn't see in your project, they'll kind of come to the top and you can pop them before they've totally cured. If you miss one and have an issue after you can go back and fix them. So I'll kind of get into that more probably in other projects because since we're working with paper, it's kind of the easiest thing. 
it's a flat thing you're working out, so bubbles really aren't usually too big of a problem. So I'm just gonna guess that that's maybe two minutes or so, and I'm gonna put that aside and just let it rest. And you can put it um, even under like a light bulb or something if you want to, to kind of see those bubbles um, pop, but you don't need to, you can just set it aside. So I'm gonna toss that stick and I'm gonna show you, I did a bunch of experiments and so I'll kind of um, show you some of the things that I played around with. And then I, I did get a new tool today that I had ordered from her um, to see how it works. So uh, when I first decided to do this, she had recommended using these studio sheets, which I, this one just arrived today. This is my normal craft sheet, which is the same material. I may have gotten it from the same place, I don't know, but it's kind of banged up because I've been crafting on it. So I wanted a brand new one that would be nice and smooth. Um, when you do the resin and, and just leave the papers on here, you'll be able to peel them off of this. And that worked out great, um, but this does have a little bit of a texture on it. So that means that's gonna transfer to the backside of whatever you're doing, and you'll see that imprint on there. And I'll show you some samples of how that kind of works. Normally, it's not going to be a big deal anyway because there's going to be a front and a back to your project. So, you know, it may not matter. These aren't cheap. Um, I'll put the link. I just got these today and I got this little squeegee thing that she used to put the resin on her paper. I didn't have this when I was doing my samples over this week, so I just used a credit card. So you just, this is actually not a credit card, but, you know, a plastic card. So you can, you can use that. I'll show you um, how this, how they turned out with this. And then we'll see how it goes with this. I haven't used this yet. Then the other thing is, when I read the first book, they I don't even think these existed at that time, these craft sheets. And these are heat resistant and all that kind of fancy stuff. You don't really need it to be heat resistant and all that for paper. So the thing that I used to use before they had these where I, I still use the cookie sheet because when I'm doing stuff, you have to put it aside and you don't want it to get dust on it or anything. So I put it way out of my way so it doesn't have an accident, but I just take a cookie sheet. And then um, I'm gonna try this with paper. What I did is I took, uh, when I do my pendants, I put them on packing tape. So normally if you're gonna do a necklace, you would be taking a piece of packing tape, you would be folding back the end, and I think this is how she had me do it when I read the first book. And let's see, where's a pendant? And I would just, I'd have it stuck on, on here, on this packing tape, and you fold over the edges just so you have something to grab, right? Because this is sticky. So I would normally be, it's not on the chain obviously, but I would normally be working on that and, and then just lay them all on a cookie sheet. So I got the idea today. I thought, well, I'm gonna get another cookie sheet and I'm just gonna cover the whole thing with packing tape. That way I have a nice flat surface that doesn't have a texture. So I'm gonna try this today. Um, when I first read the book, the other thing, I have a piece of paper actually of the resin paper. This one I made years ago. And I don't know if you can see, but there are like all these kind of cool wrinkles on the back side, if you can catch that in the light. And those are caused by, I think she, I, I did it on an opened up plastic garbage bag. So I had um, the garbage bag protecting my cookie sheet and then I had my paper laid out on it. And because it was a garbage bag and I had opened it up and it, was, it wasn't perfectly flat, it transferred all those wrinkles onto the back of my paper. So that was okay, you know, I, I didn't mind that. Um, but I, I want to see if I can get one that's totally flat just for fun. I like to experiment. So if you don't want to buy the craft sheet, I guess is what I'm getting at. If you don't want to buy that, this was $4 at Walmart. And then just some packing tape, and I just taped it on there. Now, you don't want to put it directly onto your uh, cookie sheet without the tape because I've done that before, and these have a coating on it. You, they kind of sparkle. Well, I had a, a piece that got on there and it, when you peel it up, it'll actually transfer that coating from your cookie sheet to your project. So I just wanted to kind of teach you all my mistakes so you don't have to make them yourself. Now today, while I was getting that cookie sheet, I thought, you know, it'd be nice if I had something that was just perfectly smooth if I want my back to be smooth. And I found this placemat 
and I thought it's plastic. I don't know if it'll work, but I'm thinking I could peel the resin up off of this. So I'm going to try this today too. It kind of bothered me that it was really busy. Not that it should matter, but it's a visual thing for me. So I actually, one side was solid, but it's kind of that foamy stuff. And I don't know if the resin will just adhere to this. So I am going to do an experiment where I'm going to put some on here to see if it peels off of this because I would just, I like how smooth this is. And if it doesn't, this was pretty smooth too. And it's plastic, so I think it'll peel up off of this. So I wanted to try a few different things that were cheaper alternatives than buying these craft sheets because, like I said, these aren't cheap. So when I did my experiment the other day, um, I started with, you just want to get some different kind of papers. So the one thing, where did my little tiny one go? The one thing that uh, you need to do for paper is you can either seal it or not seal it. And what's going to happen is if you take a piece of paper, where's my original one that I did? I took this piece of ephemera, it's just plain paper, and I cut out some circles for our little practice thing here. And if you want them to stay the same color as the, the original, then you need to seal the paper. So these two I actually sealed. You can use Mod Podge or you know decoupage glue, white glue, anything that's gonna dry clear. Or you can buy this paper sealer from Ranger that is uh, another thing invented by Susan that's just a paper sealer for the ice resin. So it's kind of thick and it's white, but it dries clear. And what you do is I just take a little throwaway paintbrush and let me get a little piece of paper here. And the reason you want to do this is the resin is going to just soak into your paper if you don't seal it first. And that's what's going to change the color of it. Same with a photograph. Anything that you're doing that's paper, if you put resin on it, it's porous. And so it's just going to go right through. So if you're going to want it to stay the same, then you're just going to paint a coat of resin or this paper sealer all over one side. We're going to just pretend that I did all over one side. And it's really important you have to get the edges too, because if you left those open, even if you painted the sealer on the front and the back, those edges are exposed. It's going to seep into those edges. So you want to just make sure you get your edges all coated. You would let that dry completely, and then you do the other side. And if you're worried you didn't get it covered completely, do two coats. And this doesn't dry, you know, really fast, but um, you do want to get good coverage. So what will happen is if you don't get good coverage uh, and you, you, you put the resin on it, it might be white where you put the sealer, but if there's one little spot, the resin will go in there and it'll look like maybe like a water stain or some kind of damage or something like that, which that's okay. If you want it to look aged, that's maybe a look that you like. So these two are um, sealed. And then these are the exact same paper that aren't sealed. So you can see how it changed the color. These you don't see through because I sealed the paper first. And these are kind of translucent. Can you kind of see how you can kind of see through the paper? So if it's text, you can kind of see the back side coming through the front side. So it's it's just a look. It's whatever you, you know, whatever kind of project that you're working on, how you want it to how you want it to be. So you can either seal them or not. Um, I think that's the only one I did seal for my experiments. Um, this is just another, this is a, a piece of uh, just regular copy paper that I copied a page out of a dictionary and then I didn't seal it. And so you can kind of see how it's just a little translucent. And this, I put quite a bit on this and you can see how it's just kind of neat. It's almost just like plastic paper. This side kind of looks like wax paper. And I don't know if you can see the parts that are more dull. That had... Um, just the right amount, I guess, uh, of resin because it went into the paper, but di it didn't puddle through on the back. Whereas here, you can kind of see the texture of my of my uh, studio sheet. You can kind of see that. That's where there was more resin, and it went through the back side. 
and then it just took on the texture of, of that. And this discoloration is because there's just no uh, resin on that. So you can kind of see what it does. It just kind of gives the paper a fun technique. So you could use these in your ju junk journaling or whatever, um, just as part of a, a textural element in that. So that was just a plain piece of paper. And then um, a really one I just love, and I've already got another project started with this that's going to be a whole other video. But this is just... See how that looks like glass? Just to almost totally clear. That is um, started out as just white tissue paper. So, I mean, this is just like the kind of tissue paper that comes in, you know, a shirt, you know, a, the shirt wrapping when you get a dress shirt. But that's just plain tissue paper. And then I tried some with um, stamping on tissue paper. So this, I used this baby blue, just regular gift wrap tissue. And I stamped with, uh, you want to use a permanent ink, just your regular stamping ink. And I just did it on the paper, and then I resined it. And But you can see how you can kind of, it's almost clear too, you can see right through it. And that, so that started out as that blue one. And then I did, I decided I wanted to try to stamp on something totally clear. So I took... Um, just, you know, the clear cellophane that there are any kind of, uh, let's see, just like this kind of, you know, this kind of acetate bag. That was all that was. And I still, even though I used the, um, the archival ink on there, it still, I don't know if you can see, it kind of, the resin kind of broke it, the, broke the ink down on this slick paper. So... I don't know that I do that. I mean, it's going to be a background for something, so I'm sure I can use this for something. But I kind of wanted just to see if I could get something that would just look like glass but have, you know, the paper, uh, to, like a little window. So that's going to be another project I'm working on. And then I did um, a tea bag. I have been saving these tea bags for uh, crafting. And it's really easy, just take your tea bag and before you take the tea out, just let it sit and dry out. And then it's easy to open it up and dump all the tea out and you have a tea stained um, paper. And so I just, it, you can kind of see where the fold of the tea bag was. Um, but I really like how it came out kind of wrinkly. It's a little rough on one side, which is fine. I love the jagged edge. And that's just because when I put it on my craft sheet, which this was the downside, I guess, um, you know, there was some out on the edge and then when I peeled it up, it just, it just left some out on the edge. But I, I kind of like that little ragged edge. This would be a really cute pocket or something on a, on a journal. So that's tea bag. I love that. And then, um, so this is the one I showed before. I did a clothing label. So this was like muslin fabric, but I just have always loved this label. So I save them whenever I buy this brand and this is just one coat and it made it pretty stiff. Um, I kind of, for a lot of things, I'm probably going to do multiple coats because this I might want to actually be like a book cover. I think would be cute for like a little small book, um, you know, punch holes on the side. So you could leave it like this. It's kind of rough on one side, um, has some smooth parts, like I said, where more resin was and it kind of settled onto the craft sheet. So I really like that, but I think I'll probably go ahead and do more coats on that one. And then one thing that I um, that I did that I just love, love, love is I had made a photocopy and I used my original, which was a bummer, but this is a shrunk down version. So I'm going to see if I could enlarge this again, but I had taken all these actual watch fa clock faces and watch faces and in hands before I turned them into jewelry. I took a picture, a, a copy of them, um, just so I would have them as little pieces of ephemera. And I wish I would have made more because now I can't find them and all those are gone. But I, I cut them out and I didn't seal them. I just resined them on one side. Um, but they look so real because it kind of, you know, it just kind of makes them shiny and I could do more coats on them. And, and, and then actually I think the touch of them, they'll actually feel like the real thing. So I may do that and go ahead and, and do something on the back side. But these are the clock faces and then little watch faces. So I have a whole bunch of them now. And I, I've got all kinds of little ideas, I think, for these. Uh, so it, 
it just kind of gives you the idea if you ever have the original of something, an item, you can you can kind of make it look like a little a reproduction of it by using the resin and just giving it some thickness um, to it, like I said. So those will be a, something fun to use. And then you can you do organic items too. I mean, I know this was all supposed to be about paper, but um, you can do other things too. This is actually the, the little watch hand or clock hands. I wanted to show those. So I just left them, you know, on one, the whole piece of paper and I just, you know, painted a section of it and then just cut them out, you know, afterwards with my little um, fussy cut scissors. And then I actually just used a hole punch to punch that hole back. I wouldn't have even had to do that. But now if I want that to look like a real clock hand on something, I can just do more resin on it. You know, I could have made it thicker. Um, and then, you know, it's going to look like a real hand. So I thought that was fun experiment. Um, when it comes to like organic thing, well, let's see a couple more paper things. So this one, um, I have a little punch that cuts out, um, butterfly shapes. I did this one quite a while ago, uh, cause I wanted to see if I could do two and make it kind of look three dimensional. So it's, you know, the cutout butterfly out of book page. This took a lot of coats because there's holes, you know, so everything kind of went through until you get that first coat where you can stick it onto tape or something. The resin just goes everywhere. So you basically just paint it on with a paintbrush in, in small, thin layers until you get it built up as much as you want. So that one took quite a while. This was um, an actual paper napkin. My, you know, you take away the ply. This is the only scrap I have left, I think. But you just take away the ply, one of the plies, so you just have the printed ply. And then I went ahead and I didn't seal it or anything because I wanted it to kind of look see-through. And this had a butterfly on it. And just, did, you know, did a coat of the resin on it and then cut it out after. It's much easier to cut it out after it has a layer of resin just because it adds that stiffness to it. So I'll probably do more coats on this too. But um, So you can do it on napkins. Tissue paper works great. I did um, some on this. Uh, this is like decoupage paper. This is, I think, a Tim Holtz um, little... Where'd the container go? This is just this little um, collage paper. So it's thin like, you know, like fancy tissue paper. Um, and I really like how it turned out. I'll give you a sneak peek since I'm making, I'm working on that that next project. But it had some little birds on there, so you can kind of see through them. So I've just made these little leaves. So this one's not finished yet, but um, the tissue paper, uh, collage paper worked really well too. So that's just another little paper. And then you can do this on organic items. So. Um, I've done some before. I, I did this on this leaf so you can actually see some of the resin on the back still. I had pressed this leaf in my little flower press. And then today I decided, you know, it kind of was starting to peel up and I thought, I wonder what that would look like just in a clear leaf. So I used it kind of just as the imprint. And I don't know if you can see the little veins on the the leaf still. So I really like that. It needs to be, if it's going to be used for jewelry or something, it needs to be much sturdier. So I would have to be careful only to put the resin on the smooth side, because if I put it on the side that has all the veining, it'll make that veining disappear because um, the resin is self-healing. So it'll fill in all those gaps. But I thought that was really pretty too for something. So it can go on a, a paper project you know, in a journaling project or mixed media art, or you can continue, like I said, make it thicker and, and use it for a piece of jewelry. So that's that. Now I've done feathers for a while now, um, but you can take a natural feather and it takes lots of coats too. You just put it on with a paintbrush um, and then just, you know, set it somewhere safe. Um, but th these could be made as jewelry or use them as embellishments for your books. Um, love this one. And this little one has, I kind of separated it out. It's a feather, you know, and so it's really delicate. So when you're going on it with the paintbrush, you kind of have to separate all the hairs. Uh, I have a feather here somewhere. So when I when I do some of this resin, I'll maybe show you how that works. 
You can also take a little pin and kind of separate them so that you get the feather shape again. Otherwise, sometimes they just come out as like this little little skinny thing. Um, I have another little one like that where it's really hard to kind of separate all the little hair hairs, I'm gonna call them, um, from the feather. But you can see how delicate. And the, the weird thing is it, it might be like um, a little brown and then this looked white. But when you put the resin on it, you can see that it's, you just see right through it. So I just love how feathers come out. Those are just beautiful. This one was kind of a long skinny one. And I did a experiment with adding some enameling. I did a coat of the resin on it first and then did some enameling and then added some ink. And I think I'll add another color. But these are just some different things. I know I'm jumping ahead, but these aren't paper, but I'm just showing you some of the little experiments I've had because they're all going to turn into little projects later on for other videos. So I think my, um, I think my resin has set up enough now. You can kind of see it does still have some effervescent, I call them, bubbles in there. Um, so as it cures, though, hopefully those will kind of go away. Um, so for some paper, I wanted to try it. Um, just to kind of show how the squeegee thing might work. Let's do it on this one. Now I'm gonna put gloves on because this is really messy. She didn't even wear gloves on her video and um, I'm not that neat and tidy and it's really sticky stuff. So to clean it off of your hands if you don't use gloves, um, alcohol will take the sticky away. So I, I keep these um, handy. Um, for two reasons. I use these little ones. If you're doing a second coat of resin on something, you want to make sure there's no dust or fingerprints or anything on your project or, or they'll be buried forever inside your project. So I always just take these little alcohol prep pads and just go over the tops of everything because it dries immediately. Um, for cleanups, for bigger cleanups, I just use paper towel and I keep a big thing of alcohol. It's cheap. You know, so really, when you think about it, you don't really need very many tools. A cookie sheet with some protective covering on it, you know, tape, um, your little measuring cup, a throwaway brush, a popsicle stick, and that's about it. So when I did these before, I used this card. She actually just poured it on here and did it. So I'm just going to pour a little tiny bit. Okay. And then you just smear it on there. And the whole thing, you can kind of see it's just going right through it. The nice thing too about this doing this paper is if you make jewelry like I do or other things, you know, making pendants or something, when you're you can't throw you have to throw that away. And so you're wasting it. So any leftovers, you just make paper with it. So I'm going to try, to, I'm just going to see if this feels any different to use this rubber squeegee thing. And she even had a sponge. You can just use a sponge, but I think the sponge would just soak up all the, all the stuff. Yeah, this just feels nice and smooth to use this rubber one. You can really kind of smoosh it in there. So I kind of like that. It might then not leave wrinkles in it. So basically you would just do that and then you leave it for 10 hours and you're going to come back in the morning and it's ready to go. So um, it's that simple and you just use different kinds of papers. And um, I think for these little things, I'm just going to show you just as a tease because this is our next project. Um, is on the, putting it on a frame, putting it on something and you can use a, a paintbrush too. So I'm going to do the back side of this one. So you can you can paint it on your paper if you just want like a little part of it. Like the watch faces when I was doing those, I didn't want to waste the resin on this whole piece of paper when I'm only going to cut out the watch. So and I would just leave that to the side. So I would just do, I would just take this and just paint on the one that I, you know, the one that I'm going to cut out. Now they say, you know, like ink like this, uh, this is just an inkjet printer. It could smear the ink, 
um, like a laser printer, if you have copies made at a copy place, there'll be a laser printer so it won't smear. Mine didn't too, do too bad and I actually liked the color. I kind of like how it made them look aged. So I don't think that was a big deal. Now, I think that was probably about it. And a good thing I just did one video. Um, so if you want to make up some uh, resin papers just to try to see what you like, um, I would go ahead and do that. And then catch me for the next episode. And I'm going to teach you how to make the leaf frames. And we'll do paper on that and then turn it into something, you know. So I hope uh, this helped you understand the uh, ice resin a little bit. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments and join me for the next episode as soon as I have it up. And in the meantime, go make something. Bye.